So, Dan, uh, you're the cinematographer on The Shape of Water, which is uh, one of the most unique movies we've seen in a really long time. Uh, you've worked with Del Toro before. Talk a little bit about your initial reactions uh, when you first read this script, when you first heard the story for it. Yeah, you know, Guillermo and me's background is going back to when we did Mimic together. That's like 20 years ago. That was his first American movie. That was my second American movie. So both of us was like, you know, young and free and you know so we did this with miramax and there was a lot of stuff going on there so we didn't see each other for 20 years and then he called me for Cri for crimson peak and when we shot crimson peak he said you know i have this crazy story he didn't say crazy but he has this fantastic story about a girl that cannot speak that's falling in love with a fish man and i said all right and he said i want to shoot in black and white and i said of course wow that's amazing because Every, all cinematographers like to shoot black and white. So we, we talked a little bit of black and white and you know, I read the screenplay and it was, green screenplay was fantastic, but we couldn't, black and white disappeared and we went into this color palettes movie and you know, I think it works fantastic. Well, I mean, one of the interesting things about the movie is that it blends so many different elements. On the one hand, it's genre, it's sci-fi, it's um, fantasy, horror, um, it's a Cold War mystery drama. So how did you come up with, uh, I guess, like a, a consistent visual style for it? You know, when Guillermo is making a movie, he's making concept drawings, you know, for each, not for each set, but, you know, just concept drawings for each, yes, yeah, small, you know, sequences. So, you know, and that's a really good guideline for everybody, you know, for me, production designer, makeup and hair and wardrobe, so, you know, and we had this clear feeling about we want to do a more green bluish movie for her world, you know, steel blue, green, uh, cyan, and not break that until she's falling in love with the fish man. So her world is like steel blue, green, cyan, and the world around him, around her is more normal color temperature lighting. But that's changing when she's falling in love with the fish guy, you know, when they're falling in love to each other in the bathroom, we're changing that color palette into more golden key lights. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit more about, I mean, the movie has such a, uh, you mentioned the color palette. Uh, can you talk a bit about working with the other heads of department, uh, production design, costumes, uh, in order to come up with that visual style? Yeah, you know, as I said before, Guillermo was approach to this one you know he had a very strong feeling about the colors you know so and we are talking about you know we are spending a lot of time to find the right colors so for the walls you know for the uh, wardrobe so, so everything is blending in very very precise and we're shooting some tests so we are sure about you know that color palette is going to be so strong as possible because the color we are shooting in the camera you know with the dit the color correction guys we are not changing that when we're coming to the di so the color is going to be one to one in the whole movie from start to beginning you know some movies you're changing the color palette color palettes in post but we're not doing that um so for us it was a we spent a lot of time to find the right colors for the walls at the lab you know the corridors and her clothes of course the red shoes have to be the particular color that's just a very, very strong cooperation between the head of departments. And of course, it's coming from Guillermo because he's, he's so precise what he wants to do. The film also has a very uh, strong sense of the period. Uh, can you talk about capturing the Cold War period through your photography? Yeah, no, we, di we didn't spend so much time talking about, you know, the, we want to shoot the movie like with a moving camera, you know, we didn't want to make a classical when you're moving in from one master to another master, you know, the way we are designing the shots is like it's going to from one camera movement to cut to another camera movement. So it feels like the camera is floating around, it's not pushing around. And the Cold War, you know, I think this is more into, you know, have not so much to do with the cinematographer. It's more, you know, of course, everything is cinematographer in the, in the end. But it's more about, you know, the, the science of the set and, you know, the science of the whole concept with the, and that's again coming from Guillermo del Toro, you know, because he, he, um, he's so precise about where he wants to go. Mm -hmm. What were some of the, we, we know that he's a, a great lover of movies and a great visualist. Uh, what were some things that uh, he 
might have shown you as uh, inspiration for the movie, or what were things that you drew from for inspiration for the movie? He never showed me any inspirations for the movie. He has these concept drawings, and you know, we 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 like the same kind of feeling. You know, like we like the single source lighting. You know, we want to have deep shadows. We are not afraid of the shadows, but on the other hand, you know. It doesn't have to be a scary movie. We spent a lot of time to light Sally so it looks like a princess. And that was that feeling about princess getting stronger and stronger during the movie when she's falling in love with the fishman. Uh, and that's I think the lighting is very, very important for this the feeling of that, that movie here. Could you talk a bit more about that, the lighting and how you used it for uh, dramatic purposes? Yeah, for sure. You know, when we were sliding Sally in the beginning, you know, she was, it was a single source light. She was, as I said before, her world was steel blue, green, and cyan. And, you know, we have a very strong key light on her, on her face and deep shadows. Uh, and the guys are more dramatic lighting, you know, a little bit more side lighting, three quarter lighting, a little bit more under shot, a touch more wide angles. Uh, most of the movie is shot between a 21 and a 32 millimeter. Uh, and we shot more wide angle on the guys, but and a little bit more dramatic, dramatic lighting setups on, on the guys. Mm -hmm. What was the most complicated uh, scene for you guys to shoot, either from just a technical standpoint or from a standpoint of trying to figure out the right visual language for it? I think the most difficult when you read the screenplay, the most difficult was the beginning and the ending where we're shooting dry for wet. And dry for wet means, you know, we're shooting in a film studio. There's no water at all. It's just a lot of smoke. And instead of having a film light, you know, as a key light, we have a film projector where we have, where we have a kind of a gobo so the light is moving around. That sounds very, very complicated, but it was not so bad. But I think the biggest challenge was to shoot the ending where they're standing on the pier just before they shoot jumping into the water because we shot that in november hmm. in toronto and it was just freezing cold it was like insane cold uh, and it was very windy and you know so we have to rain with hot water because the access was getting so cold and when you're hitting the camera with, with hot water and you have a very low temperature around it getting a lot of mist so, you know, we have rain deflectors on and they couldn't take the difference in temperatures. We have to take, get rid of them and uh, yeah, to find another way to solve that problem. And that scene was in the beginning that was designed like a high speed sequence. Uh, we walked away from that, uh, but the, the whole lighting setup was made as a, a lot of, lot of light because we want to shoot thousand frames per second, but we didn't do that in the end. But that sequence was very complicated with a lot of rain, big, big setups, you know, and extremely bad weather. And we have to protect the, our cast from this crazy environment. You mentioned the beginning of the movie and shooting uh, dry for wet. I was wondering, because uh, I mean, there's so many sequences in the movie, uh, like, like the beginning, like when they're uh, in the bathroom together making love, um, like, uh, I don't want to spoil the ending of the movie, but... Um, <laughs> How, how do you how do you do that? Can you talk a bit more about that? The drive for wit, the beginning is, you know, that's the beginning of the movie is a CT shot. And then we are coming into a corridor and that's a wheel set. And that's a steady cam shot. Uh, and the whole set is filled, filled with smoke. You know, we talk about heavy smoke. So you cannot breathe. You cannot see anything. It's, it's tough. And all the stuff is hanging from wires. And the key light is like, in the beginning, is like maybe five or eight smaller film projectors we are using. So the light is moving around from above. So it looks like the, the light is coming through water. So the camera is swimming around, coming in to her, hanging in the room on her sofa and just drifting down. And then we are cutting to real life. But the key of doing a really good drive for wet is a lot of smoke and you have to move the light around. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, every yeah. time I see the movie, I look at that stuff and I think, how did the world, how did they do that? You know, um, <laughs> you, you you've mentioned that you've worked with uh, Guillermo. Uh, I guess this is your third time working with him. Um, what is that collaboration like? How has it changed since the first time you guys worked together 20 years ago? I don't think it's changed so much, actually. Of course, he's getting a little bit older, you know, but, uh, you know, we are still very much on the same page. You know, we like the same stuff. You know, we want to have this single source line. You know, for us, it's lighting is a big, big deal. I know a lot of people are talking about they're not using any lights. And, but for us, it's like we think it's so dramatic to tell the story with the lighting. So we are very proud about about telling the story, you know, for us it's very important with the lighting. But our relationships ships haven't changed so much. Of course, we know it's all much better now, and we are getting older and we know more about movie making. Uh, but, you know, Guillermo is so open minded, you know, if, if you, when you can write a screenplay like this one, you just have to be like, this is open minded. But our relationships, you know, is, we are very agree about all. We don't have a lot of discussions about, you know, should we do it this way and that way, you know, because we can talk about should the key light be a little bit here, a little bit there, but most of the time we are so agree about, you know. So it's 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 hard work, but it's fantastic. It's so fun to do it. Mm -hmm. And this film has uh, generated a lot of awards buzz. You've been nominated by the BFCA and you've won a couple of critics' prizes. Uh, uh, congratulations on that. What does that recognition mean for you and for everybody uh, involved in the movie who's worked so hard on it? Of course, it's always nice when you get some attention, you know, and critics like what you're doing. But I think it's most important is you're doing a movie from your heart. You know, it's, of course, sometimes you get a lot of attention and sometimes you don't get any attention. That's it's good and bad. But, you know, I think it's important you do a movie and you, what you're doing, you love that and you do that from your heart. And I think that that's the reason it works so well with Guillermo and me, you know, because we have we have so strong the same taste about stuff. But of course, it's always nice to get some awards. But you and when you don't get them, it's like, mm. but I don't think that's the most important thing. I think it's important to make a movie you love. Well, you've certainly made a movie that a lot of people love. Uh, Dan, thank you so much. Congratulations on the film. Appreciate thank your you time. Much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.